Right, we're on. I have um, zero content for this video. I've just made a video just now, which you've probably seen, which was on short game. Tour Pro's secret. And now I've got three holes to play until I'm back to the clubhouse. So, I just thought I'd put the camera on, play three holes and see what happens. <laughs> you can join me if you want, tile up to yourself. Driver, so driver in the bag just now, I've got tailor-made stealth. Just a normal head, 10.5 with a hazardous smoke, red shaft in it, stiff 6.0. When I hit driver with Eureka Golf Swing, if I move my weight to the right side, I've got big trouble. I need to stay as centred as I possibly can, take the club inside and then let it all happen. The more centred I stay, the better my strike is and the straighter the shots I hit. That is absolutely pure. That's brilliant. So that is just personal to the way I play golf. There's a lot of chat online, of course, that you must... Just check there's no one coming. It's very informal. That you must get your spine angle to the right and hitting the way up now with Eureka Golf Swing and the way I develop, deliver it to impact. Doesn't work for me, I swing as neutral as possible in regards to angle of attack. Faldo used to hit down, Kepka hits down. I'm more level, stay centered, do not move my weight onto the right foot. Then from there, I'm good to go. It's two good shots, that one's a wee fraction further left. I'm just got to play them both. That was a little bit more over the top, that one, just a wee fraction just over. Straight left, a little path out to in, face square to it, but it's fine, it's, it's absolutely fine. Classic Scotland, it's mild, but that's the rain just started. <laughs> yes, with driver, the more I move off the golf ball, the more I try and get my weight onto the right side, I really struggle, that's not happening for me at all. Stay centred, swing flat, works. Everyone's different, everyone delivers it slightly differently into impact. I deliver it with my bum kind of tucked a little bit more under, so therefore my angle of attack is more up because I stand up a little bit into impact. But I've just built my swing around that and that works fine. Greek golf swing, obviously, gives me the confidence, the courage and the ability to be able to stay centered with every club. So wedge all the way through to driver. So it's all one swing and that's good for me and probably good for you too. So this is the shot that went a little left. I mean, it's actually fine. It's just, I think the first one went a little bit too far right. <laughs> So I've left myself, I don't know, it's probably 60 yards, maybe 50 yards. When I get to this distance, I don't measure it. I just, it's that distance, that's fine. I don't compete anymore, so I just don't worry too much. So my Jordan Spieth secret, which you'll notice from the last video, is now in play. Let's pop this one up there, 54 degrees. Up. Oh. Oh dear. Misjudged, a little bit short. That's all right. Strike was good. I'm taking it, I'm not bothered. Right, 54 again, nestled down. The pin is just hanging on the front edge of the green there, which is part of the reason I was short on the last one, just trying to be too cute. Which was a pretty bad move, because there's the whole of Scotland behind the pin. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's all right. Right, 53 wedge again. <laughs> the third time. There's lots of work getting done on these greens just now. So they're a bit of a mess, but I've no control over that. I can only control the controllables, which is my ability to play a decent shot or my technique. Ah, uh, three shots and I'm still not at the hole yet. We'll get there. I'm sure. You gonna give me that one, guys? That one alright? That's kind. Nice par. Struggled that, didn't it? So when the greens are like this, I mean, it is, they are, they're terrible. There's no, there's no line. There's no way to hide that. So what can I do to overcome this? Well, if I leave the pin in, I can give it a little bit more attempt or a harder attempt. But all I can do is put a good stroke on it. That's all I can do. There's no, 
there's no magic behind it. The, the, the better I put a stroke on it, the more it's going to roll end over end. So gives me the best chance. So letting the poor green interfere with my ability or letting the poor green influence me as to what I'm going to do is it's not the answer. Just accepting that. Also the fact if you play in competition when the greens are like this and you make it your a friend of yours or try and turn it to your benefit then you've beaten half the field already. So a nice stroke. Boom! Hey hey! So Titleist ball is one under, Wilson ball is level. So yeah, that's what I mean, when the greens are bad or when it's raining, that's a perfect example. I hear a lot of people come into the pro shop saying, oh, it's raining today, it's going to be hard work or it's windy. If you've practiced in the wind and rain and you can make the wind and rain your friend, then you're up for it. You've beaten half the field already. If you go out there with a good mindset, my mindset there was I can't control the green. It's completely out with my control. I can't control that controllable. I can only control the controllables. So all I can do is put a good stroke on it. Got a birdie. Right, par four, four, two, nine. So the safe shot here is just to hit a two iron or so down the fairway because it gets quite tight up the left hand side. But because I'm only playing a few holes, I want to hit a two iron and I want to hit a driver. So I want to play more clubs than I normally would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both golf balls. So even though one of them's one under par, one's level, I don't want an advantage to be here. So I'm going to throw them both up in the air. Whichever one hits the ground first is going to be the two iron. And that was this one. So the tightless ball, which is one under par, <laughs> is going to be the two iron, which is a safer option. So the under par ball is playing safe. Secretly, I wish that had turned out the other way. So tightless ball, under par, playing safe. Again, nice and centred over the ball. That is my swing thought just now. Try and not move off the ball at all. Centred to there, controlled. It's very good. Very good indeed. Yeah, so that is safe and under par. So now we get a little bit more risky. We take driver out for the Wilson ball. It's the Wilson triad ball. Don't know if you've tried it, very, very good ball. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, the triad ball is every bit as good as the Pro V1. If not better. That's serious, eh? Serious statement. Okay, so again centered with driver. Centered with driver. Come on, Steve. Oh, that is absolute class. <laughs> I may well be under par with a tightless ball, but the Wilson on the driver is working. So quick chat about driver. I've had my Ping G400 Max 10.5 in X-Flex in the bag since 2017. That is five years. And I've tried, I tried the G410, I tried the G425, both great drivers, but I saw no gains. Then the Stealth came out, I tried the Stealth Plus, struggled with that a little bit with the rail on the front. Took the ordinary Stealth out and loved it. So it's still in the bag. The twist face technology, which I've never experienced before. Can you believe that? I've never actually hit a tailor made driver with twist face, twist face technology until now. I think that helps. I mean, if you hit it miles out the toe or miles out the heel, it's going to do nothing. But if you get a little bit sort of centre toe, centre heel, what a difference it makes. I don't think you lose much distance. I think the ball flight's a lot straighter from it. So I think it does what it's supposed to do. However, you, you can still slice. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can still slice the driver and still hook the driver, but I think it does what it's supposed to do as long as you're close to the middle of the club face. So, tightless ball. I've left myself. 149. Forty two yards behind my driver. <laughs> I 
149, forgot that. So 149, 149 is, 150 is nine iron. But I'm taking wedge here because there's a little breeze behind me. And it's quite mild. And if I can get this up in the air, full wedge, 149, rather than hit the soft one, I'm much more comfortable taking a nice three quarter swing and committing fully to this rather than trying to tickle something in there. So I'm going to go hard at this 149 wedge. That's on a great line. Oh, it is front edge. It is front edge, oh my god. Right, okay. I've got another tight list here. We're going nine. That's there. Uh... Right, we're going nine iron this time. Same shot. Let's just see, that's interesting. The green's elevated, of course. 149, 9 iron this time. That is on it as well. It's a fantastic line. Back edge. So one's front edge, one's back edge. To be honest with you, the wedge that I hit, I felt as though it was perhaps a little bit bottom groove. The nine iron was absolutely flushed. So full wedge kept perfectly would have been good. Or a softer nine. So that's just one of those between a rock and a hard place efforts. <laughs> okay, actually 107. 107. One oh seven, my God, Steve! I'm going to take a little A wedge. Fifty four would get me there, but I'm just I'm going to try and smooth this one in. I'm a little bit freaked out about what I've just done with the last shot. Oh, I've leaked it right. Leaked it right. Distance was okay. See that? I'd much rather have a full shot. Balls. I assume everybody watched the Masters, the Scottish Scheffler show. It was brilliant. What a guy. I can't believe he's only 25. He looks about 45. Um, four putted the last green to win a major. Many folk have done that. Must be nice having that luxury though. Eh? <laughs> right, we've got Wedge. First tightless ball. Second tightless ball with nine iron. That's going to get binned. And of course, skin ball. Very pretty. This is right. Although it could easily have hopped off the back edge. Damage is done. So, again, shitty green. That's okay. I've no control over that. I've got control over my stroke though. And I can make it a good one. So it's tightless one under. About to go two. Smooth. Smooth stroke. Let it happen. It's not bad. It was... It looked good in the air. <laughs> I'm going to give myself that. Kevin... Ooh, Kevin, nah. <laughs> and then we've got a wedge. So this is Wilson Ball. Now has a chance to half the match or tie the match. Again, obviously same drill. It's all about pure stroke. I've got a better sense of distance on this one though. What? 
Okay, good four. Easy four. Hitting driver, smashing driver was quite good fun there. Um, that was the risky play. I guess when you get to the risky play situation, you just, just fully commit to it. The Wilson ball had to. So Titleist ball still has the honour, as he's one under. Four, five, nine yards this time, similar to the last hole. A lot straighter hole though. Titleist honour. Centred. When I say centred, I mean not moving off the golf ball, stacking the right side to try and get the way onto the left side. I can simply stay there, so much more centred over the golf ball with driver, yet as I come through to hit ball, I stand up a bit more so my butt tucks under, like so, which gives me the angle of attack, the positive upward angle of attack, without having to be there as I take the club back. And of course from there you can control low point much easier, every time, but on every shot, so wedge right through to your stealth driver. So I pick a small target, I, I aim small, miss small, you've probably heard that before. So the smaller target you aim for, the more chance you've got of hitting that if you like. So I pick, with here with driver, we've got the hills in the background. I don't pick a, there's a bunker just to the right hand side of the green, which is a good line. But I go above that, I go way up to the top of the trees, because I want to hit this driver up there. So I'm up the top of the hill, those trees on top of the hill, there's a, where the hill kind of meets there. Right up the top there, that's my target. So I'm, I'm actually aiming for something aiming for something probably three miles away <laughs> from where the actual target is. Don't just use the golf course, use things around it that's going to help. There we go. Oh, it's so good. It's a wee fraction down the right, but it was a great strike. Paths in to out, face square to the path. Boom, perfectly straight line. Probably just missed the right side of the fairway. I'm going to be honest with you, I hate this tee shot on this golf course because it's too straight for me. I'm taking that. <laughs> right, Wilson ball. The way things are going, you're going to have to birdie this hole to half the match. Because I'm not making any bogeys today at all. So here we go. Same target. That is fantastic. That's draw. That's better. Such a good ball, the triad. They've taken the weight from the middle of the golf ball and moved it, moved it from the middle or take the mass of the weight and put it on the outside of the ball. So it's the most balanced ball in golf. If you go on the website, they'll tell you all about it. I, I believe it. I'm, I've bought into that. <laughs> if I just turn this camera around here, I don't know if you can read what that says. Caution, live bees, sting risk. <laughs> it's not the sort of stinger I hit in the golf course. Right, fairway hit, tightless ball. Left myself. 173. 173. Seven irons, 170. So I'm thinking about the mistake I made in the last hole. I'm going to take my 7 iron, it's 170. Pins at the back, so there's not much room to miss it. So I'm going to choke down a fraction. I'd also just like to mention that my Eureka golf swing, people ask me, they'll say, or they say to me when they watch the videos saying, you're not using your Eureka golf swing. I am using a Eureka golf swing. Camera angles distort things. If I was to aim square in this shot, for example, I'd be there. I'm standing here because you guys can't really see, or the viewer can't really see the target. They're not sure what my target is. I'm not necessarily going for the flag all the time, but trust me, every time I play golf, my stance is open, which doesn't mean I'm aiming left. EurekaGolfSwing.com. <laughs> so seven iron, 173. I'm gonna choke down a fraction and commit to it. And if this goes through the back, so be it. That's as good as I've got. Down. I think that's big. I think it's big. It may have just held onto the back edge. 
What is going on? <clears throat> so that was flushed. <laughs> Wilson Ball is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven ish yards ahead of the Pro V1. Granted, I hit that straight, I put the tight list, I did move a little bit out to the right, but that's okay. So I had 173, I now have 161, 12 yards further drive, 161's an 8. After that last shot, now what I do, do I take a full 9 that goes 150, and just try and fly at it, because let's be honest, we've now got a game of match play on the go, this ball here's one down on the last hole. I don't want to be big. My opponent's through the back. I don't want to force an error now that he's missed the green. So I'm going to hit nine iron. 161, I said. Isn't it? Straight at it. Good full nine iron. Oh, I never hit it brilliant. I've tugged it left. But it's fine, you know, it's absolutely fine. Okay. Opportunity gone there though. Bit annoyed with that. Tugged it left, that's the thing, trying to hit it too hard. Tugged it left, the strike, I caught a little bit of ground first, to be fair. Wasn't ideal. Shall I hit another one? No, damage is done. <laughs> Must apologise about some of the camera footage today or some of the filming skills like that and that. Purely just out having fun today. Uh, do, you, do you ever do that? Do you ever play match play between two golf balls? If that was a pure match play situation there, I'd put myself in. You know, there was one ball's one under, the other one's level par. The one under is fully committed to the shot. I mean, I hit it absolutely brilliant, but it's long. It is over the back of the green. As I get closer, I can see that. So then the Wilson ball, even though it's a bounce game, trying to keep it structured and play an actual game that's, that means something, I thought, okay, let's make it realistic. Let's just take a bit off this, make sure we don't go big, make sure you hit the green. So the tightless ball has to get up and down if I two putt. And I've done that, although I did pull it slightly left, but I think that's okay. Right, we've jumped well off the back of the green here, away down the slope, my God. So up and down is key. I'm going to take my 58. I never ever hit a full shot from my 58. Just thought I'd let you know that. It's a little soft. I'm just going to be quite delicate with this. Don't want to go too far past because Wilson Ball's in a good place. There we go. Oh, it's all right. That spun pretty quickly. That spun pretty good. It stopped a lot quicker. Those greens are mad. Let's go up here and have a little look, see what happened there. So, this is exciting, isn't it? Right, hard to believe I could leave that short. Um, right, so here was my Wilson ball, pin high. Good stuff. Wilson ball's in control in this hole. Good drive. Hit the green when required. This for a half match. But I'm thinking here, two putts is good because that makes the tightest guy have to hole. So I know two's good. Okay. Good. Job done. Right then, it's all on this. No pressure, there is no such thing as pressure. Pressure is created by the player. This is just an average putt any single day. I could be at the Masters, I could be on a practice round at this, it makes no difference. When I look down, I see six feet of grass all around me. I could be anywhere in the world. Smooth stroke.
Right, I'm blaming the green. <laughs> there we go. Half match, both balls level par. So that video was a bit of a non-starter to be honest. I clearly just went out for a few holes and I just thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.